welcome in this edition of down to earth we would be talking about some of the important aspects for example women self help groups we would be focusing on the forest dwellers the teak plantation and uh, tuber plantation right so the first thing that we would see is the tribal communities in odisha has been collecting the cl creepers and that has been one of the challenging aspects the inner bark of which is used for weaving purpose through which ropes and delicate handicrafts can be brought and these cl based handicrafts have been uh, popularly grown specifically by the particularly vulnerable tribe in the regions of Mayurbhanj and the Khonshner districts of Odisha uh, this is again one of the products which is uh, seen as really important the another uh, it is also called as the malo creeper which is the non timber forest produce category right the next is there have been the changes for the same which have been brought under the hill khadi uh, khadia and the man khadia development agency and this is because this product is considered as eco friendly this is biodegradable and can contribute to reduce the use of plastic and this can be brought into the market significantly there has been the development which has been uh, worked with the help of odisha rural development and marketing society for the same uh, this is promoted through the craft mela fairs and hearts uh, the next is the rising temperatures which has been one of the important components of down to earth every time the warmest january was recorded and the temperature reached uh, or was higher by 1.27 degree celsius and this was recorded since 1850s this was considered as one of the warmest january that was recorded the arctic ice has its annual maximum which occurred in the month of march which was again one of the highest figures over the years uh, now to control this definitely emission and reducing emission is one of the aspects so emission targets 2040 and european commission's uh, propose propose Uh, the recommendations for the same to reduce the net greenhouse gas emissions by 90% uh, in the year 2040 has been significant now the efforts have been made, made to achieve the net zero emissions for that renewable sources of energies are being utilized there are issues for reducing the emission and uh, the global tracker that's the climate action tracker is proposing nearly 65% reduction by 2030 in order to reach the 90% levels by 2040 the next is the minimum support price and the debate regarding it which has been going on in delhi the protest for the same and specifically for three of the crops which is the pulses cotton and maize at msp without any quantity restrictions the next is a very important topic highly important for your upcoming prelims which is pf as per and polyfluorinated substances now these are compounds which are found in food packaging and water resistant clothing now they are called as forever chemicals why forever chemicals because they persist for thousands of years without breaking down into smaller particles and therefore pose a higher risk for diseases like cancer now uh, the separation of these can be done only through mass spectroscopy or chromatography and there have been researches going on in new jersey institute of technology which has identified that this material is this method which is done to segregate it is expensive as well as time consuming so a quicker approach has been developed which is paper spray mass spectrography now within less than 3 minutes this method can identify whether the per and the polyfluorinated um, chemicals or substances are present or not the next is women self help groups now women self help groups go a long way to empower individuals bring in economic autonomy elevate the status of uh, society and bring in community resilience there have been uh, various efforts for the same in india we have nearly 0.65 million villages a lot of schemes which have been going on specifically in the form of let's say the national rural livelihood mission is one such schemes where we talk about existence of 9 million self help groups across india which translates to at least 14 self help groups every village in india now this 
each self help group which have minimum 10 to 12 women in each of the uh, segments and they come across various socio economic backgrounds so these can once organized properly go a long way now the concept of self help groups has been dated back to 1970s um, there was the seva which is the self employed women association in gujarat which was considered as one of the backdrops in this project and these similar groups came up with the facility of providing a small loans for establishment of livelihood opportunities they were mainly for tailoring or saving purpose or for livestock rearing then there were schemes under government for example swan jayanti gram swarojgar yojana which provided opportunity opportunities for self employment and the loans were availed for the same purpose the first uh, self help group bank in india was established during 1970s and this was by ila but uh, under the seva in gujarat 12 self employed women came across in the unorganized sector and uh, ila but was basically a lawyer and a trade unionist and she assisted the women workers organize the unorganized sector in the urban areas of ahmedabad and since then the idea of creating a non bankable bank which was a bank by the women for the women uh, of the women and this was to help them with any kind of financial securities now this uh, established its own form as a cooperative bank which was known as mahila seva cooperative bank in 1974 which became the india's first cooperative bank specifically for self employed women 4000 members of the group contributed only 10 rupees to this bank initially and that was the initial capital with which seva started but this has gone a long way and had been rightly termed by scholars as rich bank of the poor now this was established with a collective ideas for dairy cooperative called as dholera women milk uh, producer cooperative society where women involved specifically with cattle care and milk production was part of it now similar efforts have been done for uh, rudi multi trading company for agricultural product purposes uh, there have been jyoti behan mayavika uh, the secretary of seva who has been working with bachat bachat mandali as one such uh, scheme so these schemes go a long way in bringing and developing the region the next the next important topic which was covered is the changpa people now changpa people are the people living in the changthang regions of ladakh they are nomadic people who actually have goats yaks and sheep and they have a huge climate challenge that they face with a short summer where uh, they engage with livestock they have a long winter period where they are mainly involved with knitting activities garments and goods for personal use now uh, the changpa women play an important role in the trade uh, pashmina wool or pashmina shawls is one such product which has been uh, the bread and butter for them uh, similarly we have seen the associations for the same the looms for the same have developed and one third of, uh, work is or the revenue is generated uh, gets distributed among the women members 40% is going for procuring the raw wool and the task is exclusively mentioned uh, is actually maintained by the women and has a dedicated enterprise management system specifically in the field of spinning knitting of the pashmina shawls uh, they earn nearly 3000 a month but for weaving dyeing this can go up to 18000 a month now uh, similar to the Ch uh, changpa people there is another case study of kutum uh, Kudambishri Kudambishri is uh, basically a uh, empowerment initiative in the regions of Kerala it was a government sponsored initiative started in 1999 and with the support of union government and nabard uh, this has gone a long way specifically uh, during the times of uh, pandemic the association got more stronger and there were uh, interest free credits that were distributed now the people involved with Kudambishri basically deal with catering organic farming agri business or other innovative opportunities that they can extend to the next is the rishikesh program by aims now through this 
drones are supplying medical equipments to the district health centers now aims achieve this milestone to become the first government hospital in the in the india to actually use drones to transport medical supplies to remote and district healthcare centers uh, this has been one of the important developments specifically in the hilly terrains where it take days to reach for example chamba district has um, uh benefited where the distance was covered in 3 to 4 hours this is now covered only in half an hour so drone can carry a load up to 6 kg and fly up to 50 kilometers on a single go so that's again an important development that we have seen then um, there have been self help groups which have been working in the regions of odisha for odisha mission shakti program is one such program for empowerment and this mainly deal with women working in broom making sectors or tailoring activities and there has been um, various parks which have been restored for example the bhubneshwar's nico park which was damaged in the cyclone fani has been restored with this uh, effort and the redevelopment has been done similarly jal sathi initiative in one such a scheme in the regions of odisha there have been contracts for cooking for millet cafe which has been established similarly in tamil nadu it is the um, amma canteen scheme which is working as part of the self help groups and this is one of the canteen schemes for providing uh, curd rice for lunch uh, as part of the meals uh, similar schemes have also been promoted in the states of rajasthan cleanliness and um, self help groups related to it have developed in the regions of karnataka where more than 1800 women have been working for it in dakshin kannada district uh, accepting plastics from the shopkeeper from uh, which is used by the fish market meat market is being reused and there has been uh, reuse on a multiple basis which has been identified so self help groups are working for those uh, plastic and uh the 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 household waste which is coming in the next is uh, agriculture now for the agriculture we have seen uh, various studies focusing on the number and the size of the farms across 180 countries this research was published by university of colorado and talks about reducing uh, the global count of the farms by half while the size of the individual farms would double now this study says that this would be the result by 20 uh, 2100 and and based on that the ways of farming have to change so rather than having the labor intensive small diversified farm we need to have larger specialized farms and few of the question is how to gain control over agriculture how can non farmers farming sector accommodate the transition and what could be one of the best ways to actually implement it in the regions of let's say sub saharan africa west asia north africa oceania so studies for the same has been working and there have been consequences which have been brought so one consequence as we already mentioned is consolidation of the farm the second is expansion of the larger farms bringing in specialized equipments and the third is the sector itself the agriculture itself is vulnerable to various risk and this is where we say uh, a diversified food portfolio has to be um, checked by the farmer that means mono cropping has uh, is should not be promoted and diversification of the crop is necessary in order to make it a sustainable system the next is sweet tubers now sweet tubers or shankalu is one of the important choices and is found commonly in the indian market uh, it has a little sweet flavor uh, it is particularly uh, Uh, given or actually offered to goddess saraswati during basant panchmi and it represents the shank or the conical uh, or the shanku shape and therefore is uh, really important now the the initial ones it is believed that it originates from the regions of tropical america uh, the mexican turnip it's similar to that and then the taxonomy for that had been described by carl linnaeus uh, they have identified five different yam species uh, mainly hailing from the regions of central america india china guiana uh, bangladesh caribbean and french guiana uh, but they have been available in various forms now 
the genus for the same has been important it has grown as a perennial vine and it has numerous health advantage for example the carbohydrate content is less uh, the starch content is less uh, it is relatively more juicy more crisp and has higher amount of fiber it also has good amount of potassium which is present uh, fructo uh, oligosaccharides and inulin are present which actually are inert carbohydrates that is they do not convert into simple sugars during the direct process of digestion and therefore they are beneficial for uh, diabetic patients as they have lower lower glycemic index right uh, the studies have been done for the same and identification for the same has been brought in but the central tribal research institute at trivindrapuram uh, tiruvananthapuram in kerala has been working for projects related to tuber crops and identifying the health benefits again this is a crop on which we see very less infestation uh, one of the common ones is aphids and insecticides can be used to manage it the next is teak plantation now india has a huge amount of teak plantation mainly grown for um, uh, furniture purpose but it is also uh, recommended uh, for maintaining the forest cover in the uh, in the forest areas right so uh, there have been misleading assertions from uh, private entities talking about the targets for the teak plantation but there are also private nurseries and tissue culture laboratories which have been providing estimates on the density of the teak plantation which is around 800 to 1000 trees per hectare having a yield of 12 to 15 years and a volume of 0.8 to 1 cubic meter per tree now in india the uh, average is 2 to 5 cubic meters per hectare which can yield up to 10 cubic hectares uh, 10 cubic meters per hectare also there have been premium quality of teak which is found from the regions of Kerala also from the regions of Myanmar these high yielding varieties can be obtained only if the climate conditions are suitable and uh, they have an extensive rotation period the rotation period is around 35 to 80 years which is a huge time period the annual productivity is 5 to 20 um, metric cubic metrics per hectare right uh, even from Malaysia we have seen huge amount of teak plantation activities and even plantation cropping for teak which has been seen uh, states like Madhya Pradesh have been providing subsidies for the same. There have been plantations where people are ready to invest in the regions of Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and Karnataka area. Also marketing for the same is important and the production actually uh, is really important because India is one of the largest teak producing country and it imports 60% of the logs uh, that is mainly to fulfill the local demand. So despite a huge production we are still importing the teak from other countries the next is pollution among that nitrogen pollution now pollution is one of the important aspects sewage is one of the major sources of nitrogen pollution in water and affects the climatic scenario so main reasons are industries urbanization uh, fossil fuels and uh, they have led to increase in the global levels of nitrogen and this has also uh, actually led to increase in the water this has led to increase in the water scarcity and can lead to significant water scarcity by 2050 as per some of the studies so what are uh, the, uh, the 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 things that we need to take into account uh, now besides the issues that we have talked about so far there are technology potentials that we need to understand now uh, technology across various sectors is one such thing that we need to focus on so under the latest developments we have brain computer Computer interface as one of the technologies neuroimaging for example EEG the functional MRI uh, then we have the MEG magnetoencephalography uh, those techniques and the integration of artificial uh, intelligence models have been important brain computer interface allows to communicate commands to the computer using brain signals and they eliminate the need for physically moving the limbs tongues eyes and uh, lips to have that technology being uh, workable right but there are ethical concerns for the same now uh, this is one of the non-invasive devices that have been grown but one of the ethical concern is 
originating from the philosophy of mind and neuroscience and that talks about that uh, these devices which are dedicated to brain health and wellness in the consumer market can be misused in certain cases and they can also record the presence um, uh, the the state in the uh, human right so self training to modify an individual behavior is important and also susceptibility to specific mental health conditions uh, companies can take benefit of that and then uh, the things can be brought into market accordingly so it is important that the mental uh, integrity of an individual is not sacrificed when techniques like these are utilized the next is migratory species of birds which have been discussed and this is under one of the conference to parties the 14th conference to parties which talks about conservation of migratory species uh, there has been the significant results which talk about uh, combating the zoonotic diseases uh, protecting their habitat the illegal harvesting of migratory species and uh, concerns of the light pollution on the species there are also certain species which are aquatic in nature as well as the other species which are terrestrial and birds for all of these certain guidelines have been brought uh, and um, uh, these basically have to be taken into uh, consideration significantly the next is uh, in terms of the scientific and technological advancement uh, there is a uh, approach like ostriches which has been one of the leading approaches for china and china is having a negative uh, sentiment where we talk about peaceful coexistence uh, but the principles have been sacrificed and compromised at certain aspects but there has been uh, issues where we need to focus on the policies which talks about the junk patents with scant innovations that have been uh, taken into notice the world intellectual property organization underscores the three key aspects of china's innovation strategy which is forward engineering then and uh idea for acquiring technology and brands by using international mergers and a parallel learning from foreign direct investments for the domestic companies so those are some of the issues that have been taken forward and the pa policies have been uh, accordingly made now besides these there are some other small news that have been part of down to earth one of those is alaska pox, uh, pox which is a viral disease similar to other pox like chicken pox which have been documented in the regions of uh, united states uh, there have been uh, another uh, issues of oil spill that have been seen in trinidad and tobago region uh, there are uh, issues related to air pollution in the regions of bangkok and thailand and uh, the implementations of the wheat stock and and the holdings of the wheat stock to curb the uh, price hikes have been again in news so those are some of the important things that we have discussed in this edition in case you have any questions or queries feel free to post those in the comment section the handouts for the same are available at examrace current affairs so don't miss thanks for joining in today